Hi. In this video, we're going to talk about polynomial division. Now, this might sound pretty simple because you've probably divided polynomials before. For example, let's say we have something like 3x plus 6 over 3. You've probably had this assigned to you before as like an algebraic simplification. And what you do here is you just break up that 3x over 3 and that 6 over 3 and you, and you simplify them, right? I cancel up my 3 here, I get x and 6 over 3 is just 2. So I have x over 2. Boom, I just divided my polynomial. Well, we're going to be talking, we're going to be talking about a different polynomial division. In this polynomial division, we're dividing polynomials by other polynomials. And we'll have to learn an old but new technique to solve them. So say I had something like this. x squared plus 3x plus 6 divided by x plus 1. What do I do here? Not much. This is a difficult nut to crack but I still have one trick up my sleeve. Long division. This time with polynomials. The steps in the setup are the exact same as regular old integer long division you learned in elementary and middle school. So I have my uh, thing I'm dividing inside and then I have outside what I'm, what I'm dividing it by. And my first step is always to say What's my leading term, and how do I get rid of it? Or in other words, what do I have to multiply this by to get x squared? Well, I'm looking at x, and I say, well, what do I have to multiply x by to get x squared? It's pretty simple. Just an x. Because then I'll have x squared plus x. Subtracting that, I have 2x plus 6. We, 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 we do the process again. What do I have to multiply x by to get 2x? That's also simple. A 2. So now I have 2x plus 2. I subtract, and I have 4. All right, let's do this one last time. What do I have to multiply x by to get 4? Well, actually, this is a trick question. There's, I can't. If I multiply x by 0 to get rid of the x, since we clearly have no x's here, I'll have 0. And I can't multiply 0 by anything to get 4, so I'm really stuck. We call these remainders. When we can't fully divide out a term, be it a single number or an algebraic expression, we call those remainders. We can't fully get rid of, get rid of them. They're, what, they're what's left over. They're what's remained. Hence, we call them remainders. We uh, represent this by just saying R, short for remainder, 4. Now, our answer to this question. In algebraic terms, we would say that this whole thing is equal to x plus 2 plus 4 over x plus 1. Now, 4 is our remainder and we weren't fully able to divide it out. So we can't have 4 by itself. We have to have 4 over x plus 1, what were we, what we were originally dividing by. You might say, why? Excellent question. Let's look at that. So we know that if we are to divide out this entire thing, right, we have an equation. And if I multiply this, by, say, by x plus 1, and this by x plus 1, I would expect this side to equal this side. I have to, since it's an equation. So let's do exactly that. On this side, I basically cancel out this fraction. And I have x squared plus 3x plus 6. And on this side, I have x plus 2 times x plus 1. And then these cancel out, so I just have uh, plus 4. So let's do the math. That's x squared plus 2x plus x plus 2 plus 4. Or 
x squared plus 3x plus 6, which is the same thing we have on this side. And that's why we have the 4 over x plus 1, because we have to, because otherwise we're not dividing properly. If we got rid of this over x plus 1, we'd have 4 times x plus 1, which would add not only another 4x into our term, but another 4 as well. And so we wouldn't get what our original x squared plus 3x plus 6, we get some other polynomial, which means we wouldn't get what we started with. We would have violated this algebraic equation. So putting that remainder over what you originally had is key, because otherwise we break the rules of algebra. Otherwise, we divide something and we get something different um, than we would expect. You know, in this case, we divide something and then we try to undo that division by multiplying what we divided by, and we get a different result. That means something's broken, something's off. We can't do that. It's illegal. We're breaking math rules here. That's why we always keep a remainder over what we are originally dividing by. Just, just remember, it's a remainder. It's left over. It remains. So, technically, it's still being divided, right? We still have 4 over x plus 1. Let's do another example to get more practice. Say I have, let's see, what would be a good quadratic? Oh, I know. x squared plus 5x plus 4 over x plus 4. Now, let's divide out x plus 4 and then x squared plus 5x plus 4. How do I get rid of this x squared? by multiplying by x. So I have x squared plus 4x, I subtract, get x plus 4. All right, how do I get x in this equation? I already have it. So I just need to multiply this expression by 1. So I have a 1 here. That's just x plus 4. I subtract, I get a, a 0. That means I have no remainders. Well, what does it mean to have no remainders? It means that my uh, my, my polynomial divides out evenly. What does that mean? Well, it actually means x plus 4 is a factor of x squared plus 5x plus 4. What does that mean? Well, let's represent, let's first let's, let's represent what we found. We're saying x squared plus 5x plus 4 divided by x plus 4 is equal to x plus 1. That was our answer. Well, if we factor x squared plus 5x plus 4, we actually have x plus 4 times x plus 1 over x plus 4. So then, it's no wonder that we get x plus 1. Basically canceling out this term, so we have x plus 1 as our answer. This highlights a really valuable trick for polynomial long division. Try to check first if what you're dividing by is uh, a factor of uh, your, uh, your denominator is a factor of your numerator. Because if so, your answer is really simple. No need for polynomial long division. But it won't work all the time. There are some problems that simply will not have factors. and They will have remainders, and you will have to divide out to find those remainders. Now, let's get to work. Let's do a really messy a uh, polynomial to test our skills. Something like 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 7x minus 4. Long and nasty. And let's change it up on the denominator too. Instead of just x, we'll have x squared plus 1. So this looks like this. Okay, what, what do we do? So, we want to get rid of this x squared. We have a 3x cubed. First thing we want to have is, is to have x cubes on both sides. That means we have to multiply by x. So we put an x right there. But I, I want to have 3x cubed, not just x cubed. So I'm going to need to multiply by x squared by both an x and a 3. So I have 3x cubed times, uh, and then I have uh, another 3x here. I have nothing in between. 
so I'm just going to leave that as a 0x squared. I subtract, I get negative 2x squared plus 4x minus 4. Now what do I do here? Well, I want to get rid of this uh, negative 2x squared. So I'm going to need to multiply my x squared by negative 2 to get negative 2x squared. All right. So this cancels out. I have a 4x that I don't change. Then I have a negative 4 plus 2 which is actually a negative 2. So I, I have a remainder of 4x minus 2. So putting it all together, what does it look like? What is my answer? Well, it's 3x minus 2 plus 4x minus 2 over x squared plus 1. <sighs> that was a lot of work. But it's important to practice because polynomial division is very, very important for algebra 2. In the coming videos, we'll find more refined and easy techniques to uh, find polynomials. And we'll even talk about ways to find remainders without having to do this massive, long polynomial nonsense. So that's it for this video. Just remember, you have a tough, tough polynomial, long division, just like standard arithmetic division. But that's it. That's all I have. And I hope you have a great day.